Do you know Eutychus? Probably not. Eutychus is a young man in the Bible, in the book of Acts, in chapter 20, where Paul is speaking to a group of people, and it says there that he was having to leave the next day, so he spoke late into the night, and the room was warm, there were candles lit, and Eutychus was sitting in the window, and he fell into a deep sleep while Paul was talking, and it says that he fell from the third floor window to his death. Now, here's the good news. Paul went down and rose him, raised, raised him from the dead. Um, so that's the good news. But Paul didn't pay attention to his audience, and he put the audience member to sleep. It says, actually, that he spoke on and on, and it, it looks like he said on and on and on, like he was boring people, um, even though they wanted to hear what he had to say. Maybe he spoke a little too long. Certainly, he put one person to death. It reminds me when I was a college student, I went to this large conference in Illinois at the University of Illinois. It was over the Christmas break. It was a severely cold winter. So it was like negative five degrees outside. And we had to walk outside uphill through the snow, proverbially. No, it was, it was really cold. And we literally had to walk a mile to get from some of the buildings to each other. So when you went inside, you're wrapped in all kinds of warm clothing. You go inside these sessions and they've got the heaters cranked. And there were no seats in this session. And it probably fit about 800 to 1,000 people in the room. So the only place I could find to sit down was on the wall. So about a third of the way back, looking toward the stage, I was on the left side of the room. And I sat down and I was really excited. I mean, this room was packed and this speaker was well known. And I was listening and I'll bet it was 10 minutes in and I started to yawn. Ugh. that makes me yawn even now thinking about it and I started to nod and before you know it I was in a deep sleep now here's what's different about me and Eutychus I sleep talk and in this particular occasion I talked in my sleep but I didn't just talk I yelled <laughs> I let out a loud yell and it was just a noise it wasn't words um and I tried to cover it up with a cough <laughs> um that people all over that part of the room turned and looked and tried to see who made that noise. I'm pretty sure the speaker even looked over to make sure everything was okay because it caused quite the disruption. It wasn't entirely the speaker's fault that I fell asleep. It was a wide variety of things. Certainly the speaker was less than um, dynamic. Um, also the warmth of the room also, the warmth of my clothing, it's cold outside. There was no place to take off some of the extra layers. And this event was keeping us up till late at night, midnight. And we were getting up early in the morning, like 6 a.m. So we were sleep deprived. I was warm. I was comfortable. The speaker lulled me to sleep. And I'm afraid we do the same thing at many of our events. We lull people to sleep. We aren't cognizant of the things that we are doing. That's kind of like the little hypnosis. People are just slowly fading, slowly fading, and then they're gone. How do we stop that? Well, we've got to pay attention. What are the factors that could do that? Warmth of a room is certainly one of those things. Are the use of color? Are we using cool Colors that might cause people to calm down, or are we stimulating them in the times of day when they might be otherwise inclined to fall asleep? What else can you do? Make sure that your speakers understand the rules of seven. Every seven minutes, they need to change things up. They need to move around. They need to try something different. Um, that's one rule of seven, but a different media, like throw in a video, pull in some music, bring somebody else on stage, do something totally unexpected. That Those kinds of things can keep things interesting, um, keep people engaged. If you start calling on the audience, that can do it as well. I remember when I was taking a summer class in college, we had a professor who kept a tennis ball in his hand and he would randomly just throw it out, not even give any forewarning and give us the opportunity to catch it. And if we were falling asleep and missed it, we were embarrassed. He didn't do anything else. Besides that, it definitely taught us to stay awake and maybe to watch our sleep the night before. Um, we were staying up late into the night, having conversations, playing games, doing all kinds of things. I think we were playing sardines in a college dorm. This was a summer class. Um, he knew that he wanted us to learn. What can you do? 
I would love it if you would comment on this video and tell me some of the things that you do to keep people awake, but not just keep them awake, keep them engaged so that they won't miss out on the unforgettable experiences, the transformational moments, the serendipity that could happen if they just stay alert. My name is Phil Mershon. I'm director of experience for Social Media Examiner. I'm the author of the book, Unforgettable, the Art and Science of Creating Memorable Experiences. Go make someone's day.